I had put off watching White House Farm because I already knew this case quite well. I've read a lot about it. It often appears in true crime books and magazines. But after hearing a lot of really positive things about it, I decided it was time to take the plunge. I gave it a watch. I'm so glad I did. It's truly amazing. So I will say one thing. This will be spoiler free. If you are not aware of the case, if you've never heard of the case that this focuses on, please do not do any research before watching this. Because I really enjoyed it, but there were times when I kind of knew where it was going because I'm aware of how the case developed and, um, you know, ultimately what happened. But I think if you don't know that, it may not be 100% apparent all of the time. So please do not look into this until you've watched it and then I definitely encourage you to do some reading around about. So this was released this year. It's on Netflix. It's a six-part biographical crime drama and it's it's got an amazing cast which we'll look at soon but the description from IMDb is as follows. Revolves around the true story of a fateful night in August 1985 when five members of the fam same family are murdered at an Essex farmhouse and the ensuing police investigation and court case that follows. Now, I will say the first half an hour was really dull. It was... Well, technically, it wasn't a flashback. It takes place before the murders happen. And then the murders happen. We don't get to see the murders happening. And then, in a couple of episodes down the line, there are a few, a few more flashbacks. And I basically think anything that happened before the murders just isn't interesting on screen. It doesn't come across well. It's not fun to watch. It's not interesting. But... Actually, after that first half an hour, which, at which point I thought, this is not going to be interesting, it flipped on its head. It was so engaging, absolutely fantastic. So if you're not aware of the story, I'll try and explain it a little bit more, but without giving anything away. So Jeremy Bamber reports to the police that his father sounded really panicked on the phone. They go there and they find that the father, the mother, um, his fully grown adult sister and the two twin boys have been murdered and it looks like a murder suicide and they begin to investigate this and suddenly not everything is as it seems and throughout the six episodes we have different people trying to prove different things different parties arguing um in favor of one person or another and also a couple of police officers who are adamant that there is nothing wrong with the scene everything is as it is and case closed Obviously, because of that, it's very frustrating, but in a really good way, in a way that makes you want to shake some of the characters and tell them to wake up and look at what is so blatantly obvious. But I think it's the story has been told very well from what I've read about it, my understandings of what happened. I think the, de the development is amazing because I wasn't sure how they were going to stretch this out for six episodes. It, each one's about 45 minutes. And I thought, well, this is one murder on one, well, five murders, but one one event on one night. How can they sustain this for that many episodes? Um, but they do it remarkably. The pacing really is incredible. Most of the episodes end on somewhat of a cliffhanger. And I'm just thankful that this was all on Netflix at once for binge watching. Otherwise, I would <laughs> be very frustrated if I had to watch it, you know, once a week on television. You know, God bless online streaming. It is gripping. It is thrilling. As I said, because I obviously am aware of the case and I knew what happened and what actually happened, some of those cliffhangers weren't that... weren't as intense as they could be. But again, some of them were. Because I am aware of this case. But it's not like I've read books and books about it. Although this is based on a book and I, I'm going to get hold of that book and read it. But So even if you are aware of the case, you'll still find it very interesting. So I think it handles the narrative very well. It's sensitive, but I feel like it doesn't sugarcoat anything. In terms of sugarcoating as well, it's quite graphic. There are no real close-ups of the dead bodies, but there are scenes where, you know, the detectives are investigating the room and there are just bloodied corpses lying on the floor. They don't try and conceal that. And that works very well. Um, they are very sensitive when it comes to the children, though, so don't worry about that. But the adults, um, there was one point where 
they were handling the corpses for the post-mortem and I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I've never seen that done in that way before. Brilliant set designs as well for that for those scenes. Costumes were amazing. I it, it felt like it was the 80s. I loved seeing the police cars, the police uniforms and the the WPC outfits which are obviously radically different to what they are now. The other thing as well is that policing in the 80s, completely different to how it's done now. And it's really interesting to kind of see that. I felt it was very accurate. At no point did I think, well, that wasn't possible back then or that's not something that could have happened back then. It felt believable. I feel like they really captured the essence of 1980s police work as I know it to be and as I understand it. So I'm really happy with that. And and finally, we have the acting. And it's absolutely brilliant. So Jeremy Bamber is played by Freddie Fox, who does an amazing emotional job. He, <laughs> it sounds mean to say he's got a face I could punch, but the character, because of his mannerisms and his facial expressions and his performances and the way he acts, I just, really, he really irritated me, but in a really good way. Standout character for me, um, well, Alexa Davies as Julie Monkford was great, but for me, Mark Addy as DS Stan Jones was... Amazing. I thought he was fantastic. I Basically, when he was on screen, those scenes were my favourite because he was just so captivating and I loved his character. I loved his attitude. I thought he was brilliant. Very, very pleased with that. Um, I don't know... Like I haven't watched too many interviews with any of the people involved in this real case or anything like that, so I'm not sure how accurate the casting is in terms of visual appearance. I'd say Freddie Fox is a pretty good casting for Bamber. I am aware of that. Um, but in terms of Stan Jones and things, I'm not sure. But in terms of just pure entertainment and enjoying watching it, absolutely spot on. I, I cannot fault this. And I was so nervous watching it because, you know, as I said, I'm I'm aware of this case. And I knew how it concluded. And I just thought, you know, if, if they don't follow what I know in my head, or if there are things that I think don't match up with what I believe to be true, it may be uncomfortable. That's not the case at all. It currently has 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb, which is obviously a brilliant rating and it completely deserves that. It's rated 15. As I said, it's on Netflix. It's doing very well for itself and, and I completely understand why. Please, if you haven't seen this and you haven't really heard of the case... Please don't read anything about it. Please just give this a watch beforehand and then, by all means, read some literature around it. It's, it's, it's a brilliant docudrama and, honestly, a million times better than I ever could have expected. I truly loved it.